I never thought it was going to be anything past playing like a a good local show to be honest with you guys yeah. that was like i mean the, that's what we wanted though i know yeah but that was like the personal goal in my mind i was like dude if we could just play like a couple shows in chicago or like in the burbs like a couple times a year and like kids are going crazy then like yeah i'm fine with that definitely the the most i think i ever thought of starting out was like you know maybe we'll maybe we'll get to do like a short tour or something someday We're Knuckle Puck, and this is the oral history of Knuckle Puck. So it all starts back in senior year of high school. I was in a band, and then we broke up, and I needed people to jam with. And so I hit him up on Facebook, and... We had uh, a mutual friend had put us in contact, and he knew both of us were looking to start a band, and I think he told you I was looking for someone to jam with, and then you messaged me. And, and you were like, I don't know this kid. Yeah, we had met once, but I didn't really remember meeting him. So I got an ad on Facebook, and I was like, oh, we have mutual friends, okay. Like, and then he's messaged me and be like, yo, I heard you want to jam. And I'm like, okay. And then I was like, I guess I'm not going to start a band if I don't just jam with people that want to jam. So then I was like, come over Wednesday. and. Yeah, so then it was just me and you. I was playing guitar, he was playing drums, obviously. We were just like covering songs. And then we hit Kevin up. I was at school, and then the three of us jammed together when I was home for Thanksgiving break. I was 18, and all you guys were 17, maybe. Yeah. yeah. And that was like November 2010. Basically. And then we tricked you into being in the band. Well, I thought I couldn't do it because I was in school. I didn't have a car, so I didn't know how to navigate it, so I was like... Yeah, I don't know. Like, we'll see. And then I remember you saying to me, um, "Yeah, I've been jamming with these uh, with a couple kids." And uh, kids. Uh, yeah, like I didn't. I was the yeah, we're grown adults now. <laughs> yeah. I, I, was, I was visiting Kevin at school, and he said, "I've been jamming with uh, these uh, these two kids, but uh, I'm away at school. So, uh, is it cool if I tell them to hit you up since you're in the area?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure." Uh -huh. Why not? And I was I was just working at the time, so it was really hard to get together with you. Specific. I feel like we got Kevin before we like locked you down. Dude, we were playing Newfound, yeah. Wonder Years songs. Title Fight, Movie Title. Life, yeah, Transit. Dude. The first time I jammed with you guys, you had already written Stuck. Like, yeah, we, we, had stuck. we were playing Stuck. It was like the first yeah. song that like wasn't a cover that we were playing. Mm -hmm. I thought it was awesome. I was like, man, like this is this is the kind of this is what I want to be involved in, you know? Like, all the yeah, songs was, were like fast too. Like we all wanted them to have like upbeats and. John was the only drummer we knew that could like properly play an upbeat at the time. I remember being blown away that John was playing upbeat. I was like, he's playing so fast. <laughs> <laughs> Me and John were just playing. I was playing guitar and stuff, and and we had like worked on Stuck a little bit, and then we had another song that was like the same kind of thing. Kevin came back for uh, what was that Thanksgiving break, mm. and we were just like playing like title fight songs or whatever. And I was like, oh yeah, we also wrote this one song check out, like, play the leads or whatever. Mm. And then that was, like, the beginning of the trick. Yeah. Yeah. So then we were like, yeah, play these leads. Uh, I don't know, it was cool. It was cool to, like, have him, like, play the second guitar part and, like, hear, I don't know, what that, we yeah, kind of that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then, and then never... dude, even having you come out and, like, yeah, it was fucking cool. Man. Yeah. That was my first time playing in a band, well, like, with original music with two guitars. So I remember, like, oh, yeah. playing rhythm and Kevin playing lead being like, whoa, it sounds so good. It sounds cool. Yeah, mid 2012, right? Yeah. Was when we were like, let's go in the studio and like actually record like our three best songs. Yeah, yeah. we like, I don't know, we, we recorded a demo in Nick's mom's kitchen ish. At least that's where I recorded the drums at. And like put that out, and you know, a lot of the shows we'd play at that time were just kind of like us playing to our group of friends, and like that was really it. And then I remember, yeah, probably around like mid 2012 ish, we played a show, and they were like, a good amount of people, you know, at the time, like that, like we didn't know that knew the words to our songs, and we were like, "Damn, like, what?" <laughs> yeah. And so then we were like, "Maybe we should go and record somewhere for real and see what happens." We almost so, didn't, though. Yeah, we, we almost were, didn't because we were all busy, like school, work, other bands, like this and that. Yeah, like, Nick had a full time job. Like a fun. You were in school full time. Yeah. yeah. Like that particular show where strangers were singing along was like kind of like oh maybe we should try and then we did and don't come home was kind of like our at the time i feel like it was like our last shot <laughs> like we yeah. were like all right let's because because it, it was kind of expensive to go in the studio and like record those songs for real yeah and yeah we were just kind of like we'll just kind of see how this goes 
I thought after Wither Berry came out, and that seemed to garner like a lot, relatively a lot more attention. Yeah. And hype, I guess. More strangers started putting stock into the band than just like people we knew and our friends and our social circles, I guess. Well, that was when when our manager hit us up too. Exactly, yeah. It was right when we, I think we streamed the first song for The Weight That You Buried. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, our manager, our current manager hit us up then and was like, hey, we want to work with you. And yeah, so that was like, that was probably a big point where it was like, oh, there are actual people wanting to get involved, not just listen. I remember um, the day that we put, it was it was your back porch that we put up first. The day that we put that song up, I was mowing lawns. Oh, right. And I kept like nice. I kept taking my phone out to like you know check the plays mm-hmm. and like check what people were saying about it. And yeah. then like eventually like yeah, just this email came through from Zach. I like shut the lawnmower off and I was like, yo. And I don't know if I called any of you guys or what the deal was, but I think I don't you called know. me. I remember being at work and yeah, talking to you and being like, we just got an email. <laughs> <laughs> we just, he wants to manage us. And I'd be like. Say yes! <laughs> I feel like there was a lot of like built up within us as like a group. Cause like I said, like you were working full time, I was mowing lawns, he was at school. What were you doing? You were working at McDonald's. You were in school too. You were, you yeah, were I mean, in school, I, I, was, yeah. I was like kind of school, kind of work, kind of had another band, like just kind of juggling a bunch of different interests. Yeah, so I feel yeah. like there was, there was something like built up between and like inside all of us. And I don't know, we just like wanted to be out of the situations that we were in. So I don't know, like the like putting that into our music. I don't know. I feel like people really responded to what we were going through at the time. When we were starting out, we wanted to write things or word things a little bit differently than what we had heard in music. Not that you know we do anything crazy. Yeah, I do remember in those early days, like people uh, talking about the lyrics, and I don't know. I felt like that might have been a, a reason to kind of latch onto the band, and also because you know Joe is obviously a young guy, like he has a very uni- a unique voice, very aggressive voice, and I just think it all worked together very well, and people responded to that, I think, yeah. Well, we, I feel like we met really cool, because we both write lyrics, and so like I feel like we met at this like really cool time, and we like we connected and related over like, you know, like Taking yeah. Back Sunday, and like a lot of, a lot of music and albums, mm-hmm. and I feel like we were going through a lot of like similar things. Yeah, for sure. Like they were definitely mm-hmm. different things, but in essence they were very similar. So we're each singing like a similar amount of lines, Mm-hmm. We can both relate to what's being said, and I, I feel like that just added to the emotion and you know yeah. everything else that went into writing the words and like you know the, the recordings and live and everything like that. I think we really tried to like step outside the box, like with um, while I say secluded, right? Yeah, yeah. Those were the first songs where like we maybe had a song or two that didn't have an upbeat or that uh, that you know had harmonies or had like a like a softer song part. Different uh, time signature. Yeah, different time signatures. So I feel like we really that's like when we really were like trying to push the walls out and sort of yeah get out of the box. Because the first release, "Don't Come Home," was like you know three bangers, like three really good songs, like quick, fast, energetic. Mm-hmm. And then "With You Buried" was like kind of the same thing. And then yeah, while I say secluded, we were able to like push the walls out. And it's funny because like a lot of people are like, oh yeah, all these EPs beforehand, but. I feel like that was essentially like a full length. Like yeah. all of those songs was like, mm-hmm. if, as if we had written our first full length. Yeah. Right? yeah. Over what, two and a half, three years? If we had last. written a full length too, before the release of, you know, several EPs, I really don't think it would have been, not as good, but um, ma- maybe not as cohesive. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Um, I think that we really uh, found a lot of value in finding our sound and, um, locking it in as a band before kind of committing to a whole record. And at that point too, I feel like fans <laughs> had kind of latched onto it. So we weren't afraid to like take more chances. Yeah. So then when it came to doing Copacetic, we we were really like, yo, what can we do that is not like anything we've done or like anything that anyone else is doing. The EPs versus Copacetic, like I said, like all of those EPs was kind of like the first full length. and. With that, we were more focused on like, you know, these these fast, like punchy, um, like really in your face, like live songs. And then like, yeah, Copacetic was just, I don't know, we felt like, yeah, fans had latched on. So that was an opportunity for us to push the walls out. And- when you first listen to a band or a record and you know, I feel like you know in the first 20 seconds of the song, like this song, is awesome or the song is you know okay or you know I don't like this and I feel like with disdain it was like in those first you know 10 seconds it was like okay like you know kind of what you're in for it's like 
you know it's gonna be a good song, or at least that's what we wanted people to uh, think when, we, when they listened to it for the first time. And I remember showing people that song on Warp Tour before it was out, like being at our merch tent like with an iPod and headphones and asking kids, you know, you wanna listen <laughs> to a new song? That. It's not out yet, it's not out yet. And kids listening and, you know, I'm watching the timestamp of the iPod, like I know where like the music kind of kicks in and like uh, multiple people, you know, like I would see like, like like a smile on their face and I just I would smile and I'd be like that's it that's like that's what we want you know yeah and then I remember we <laughs> did release when we did release Disdain we played it like the day or the day after we released it and people were singing along and I remember being like yo we might have something here I think the reaction to Copacetic was way more than we anticipated yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely I don't even know if I don't even know what I anticipated it just kind of was like psyched to release an album like in general, yeah, and then yeah, people liked it, and it was sick. Yeah, I feel like that's that's like the kind of like the whole uh, like the story the whole time with our band is like we're just kind of like doing this for fun, and it's crazy that other people are getting value out of it. Like, mm. let's just keep going. Yeah. I, I remember when we were writing Copacetic, I had the because dude, we had never written like a full album at once. It was just like all spread out. And in my iTunes, it was like all the, you know, all the track names that we were working with, like the demos. We didn't have an album name, so the album title in the iTunes was like, I don't even know what's happening, or something like that. <laughs> Cause like, we didn't know, you know, like you said, we were just like doing another batch of songs. Yeah, well, obviously we were all proud of the songs, but it was kind of a thing where, you know, it wasn't like, yeah, people are gonna love this, it's gonna be great. It was just kind of mm -hmm. like, oh wow, like we did it. We made 11 songs at once or whatever it <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah. And then, yeah. It's well, effective. and and I would say one one thing, like I said, after we released the stand, everyone was like singing it the next day. I feel like our crowds got louder, even with like the older songs. Mm -hmm. And then what was it right after, or was it a year after Warped that we went on that headliner? It was with, like right. It was, stuff. it was right after. Yeah, it was that fall. Yeah. Because I remember that tour being like, whoa. Mm -hmm. Just like every single song, people were like singing them so yeah. loud and. It's going nuts. Yeah, uh, yeah. There was yes. a lot of pressure for sure we, to follow up. We <laughs> felt it because <laughs> yeah, it was you know kind of like the first batches. Well, like all the EPs and even the first album were just kind of like yeah, like whatever. And then like then once it was kind of like you realize that people did care. It was kind of like oh, they're waiting for we, something yeah. else. <laughs> we like <laughs> last time it didn't matter what we did, but like now it feels like we actually have to we have we have to like. Do good. Yeah, we <laughs> like, could we could ruin this for people. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's like, kind of like a sophomore slump. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely crept in a lot. Yeah. And also, oh my god. And what also did we at even that, do? By, by that point, we had all like stopped working and stuff, so it was kind of just like, yeah. <clears throat> like, oh no, like we gotta do this. The, with the pressure of uh, trying to sort of uh, top copacetic, also came a lot of motivation, like. Like John said, we weren't working jobs anymore. It was kind of like um, what we were doing was so fulfilling that it was sort of like invigorated feeling of, uh, you know, I'm just gonna sit at home and try and write some songs. And uh, I don't know, I feel like we, I feel like we all felt that way and just kind of um, were like, let's just keep going. Let's try and just keep doing our thing. We're not gonna try and do anything crazy. We're not gonna try and, um, you know, change the formula. Uh, let's just keep getting better as our band and you know kind of do right by the fans i think that was kind of our mentality writing the second record i think it was also like our first time experiencing like that real like real life pressure like he was saying we all quit our jobs and we were all like yeah. we have to deliver something yeah and like that was like weird because it that was like real life yeah being like yo if you fuck this up like you're not gonna keep doing this yeah it was, it was definitely the turning point of like, well, this isn't just fun anymore. Like, now yeah. this is like a responsibility. This is like, there's there's sort of like things at stake now, you know? And for what it's worth, we started writing it a little late. We like got off to him and we were like, oh, shit, we gotta do that. Okay. Oh, it's been two years, uh-oh. <laughs> like, and then we literally, what? We we wrote all the instrumentals in, was it two months, two and a half months? I don't remember. Maybe. Something like that, yeah. I think the music front was like, we were all feeling like really inspired and stuff. We were making like a lot of cool instrumentals. And then when it came to like do vocals, I think we were like, oh shit. Like we, you know, I feel, I feel like that was like the hard part where we were like, okay, you know, like you said, there's, there's a big emphasis on like the lyrical content and like the aggressiveness and you know, whatever else. And that was like what we had to deliver again. 
Um, but I, you know, I, I feel like we did it. Yeah, I don't know. Following Shapeshifter, we, uh, I think we thought about and talked about uh, the following record, what we wanted to do a lot more. Um, we, we tried uh, several different producers, um, really enjoyed working with everyone. Uh, we just wanted to find the right fit, sort of not really realizing or realizing along the way that, you know, kind of uh, what we had working with Seth Henderson uh, at Always Be Genius was like, that was the formula that kind of uh, made our band what it was and made making music really enjoyable and easy and fun and uh, an environment where we all felt like all our voices were important. After working with several different people, it was just kind of like, well, it would be, it would be kind of dumb to not just do what is the obvious answer here, and that is working with Seth. If, if I could backpedal a second, <laughs> let it be known, we recorded Shapeshifter twice. We, were, we went to the studio before we went on tour with Mayday Parade. We were in the studio for like a month and a week, and we, it wasn't the, like, the album just wasn't what we thought it could be. And so we had like a month, or was it that tour like two months? Two months. Mayday Parade? Yeah, it was fucking 10 weeks. <laughs> So we, we went on tour for 10 weeks and we had like a lot of time to think and, and finish the album and you know think about what we needed to do to fix it. And so when we went home, we went to, we went to Seth. There were a lot of things, just like guitars out of tune and it, it wasn't finished. Uh, there were like, there was like a lot of layering that wasn't there, like all like the magic, like, you know what I mean? Like the studio, ma like not studio magic, but I think- There's the, some parts, some parts just like didn't like, feel right like you know, we like redid all the speaking, drums yeah, well, like sorry, speaking from, yeah like speaking from my perspective just like some uh some of my drum takes at the other with like the other person and just like i don't know it just like they didn't like feel they had like the right like feel to them like the right dynamics and whatnot so just kind of felt like those need to get some more like life to them and stuff and yeah i think the main thing for me with shapeshifter was as I said previously, we are we were so used to being in a studio environment where we're all there while everyone is tracking their individual parts, sort of uh, throwing ideas out. Like if I'm tracking a guitar part, it's super valuable having your drummer there in the room to say, oh, hey, well, like I'm playing this, so what if you played this? And just that sort of thing happening all the time in the studio uh, was something that we became really accustomed to and really I feel like that is how we worked well uh, together. And with the second record, uh, it, like individually we were very uh, isolated from one another. So it, it just didn't have the same feeling, I think uh, most of all, for me at least. Like I said, I really missed sort of uh, everybody being there in the room, being psyched on it, you know, like gassing you up when you got a good take, throwing ideas out there, ways to make your part better. Um, and even just like talking about things, hanging out, keeping it stress-free, I feel like that is like the reason why we make music because of uh, that dynamic. And when you remove that, it sort of uh, changes the whole, uh, like the whole approach. Yeah. So when when we did go back into the studio with Seth, I feel like would you say that that vibe was like yeah, yeah back we, again? Yeah. Like we, I feel like we were all invigorated and ready to you know to get this done and kind of do it in a way that we were all happy with. LP3 started with us taking a step back. We agree. Kind of like taking a step back, being like, let's work on like a couple songs at a time, not get too stressed. Like we, yeah, we, de we definitely uh, got the got the ball rolling much earlier than Shapeshifter for this one. And uh, kind of did more of the approach of just kind of writing songs, because that's just what we do, as opposed to like, oh, it's time for an album. We got to write songs, just kind of write, yeah, like Joseph. Well, this is what we like, do now, yeah. yeah. It's kind of like writing a couple at a time, like, and then once we had enough for an album, it's like, okay, studio time, let's record the ones mm. that we finished or whatever, yeah. yeah. Plus, I feel like we had to take a look at the other two albums and be like, well, how does this, how will this third one complete, you know, like a trilogy or whatever? And yeah, I feel like, I mean, we wanted like more fun songs. Yeah. Like make a more fun album. Yeah. I think the thing with uh, our first two records was the music has always been really fun and I feel like there were times where maybe uh, in writing and recording them 
uh, we were maybe a little high strung or stressed out. And so the lyrics that came out on top of that music may not have totally matched the vibe. You know, like, like I said, really kind of fun, fast songs, but the lyrics kind of dragged you down or not dragged you down, but um, they were like really introspective and really sort of uh, uh, analytical. And so I feel like this time around, we just wanted less of that and more like, we want people to listen to our band to feel good and not to go on this like existential journey. Well, I feel like we, you know, and this is me speaking, but I feel like we accomplished what we wanted to accomplish with Copacetic. Copacetic was like the idea, yeah, everything's all good. Like you may have your problems, but you wake up every day and you know, you live your life. But that's not really the vibe on that record. But I feel like on this one, we kind of accomplished that. You know, that, that idea of just everything's all good, man. Just press play, roll the windows down, and jam out. It's done. Being it's recorded. Done. <laughs> it's done being recorded. Yeah. It's almost done being mixed, and yeah, that's uh, up. Actually, man. as of today, it, it may be completely done being mixed. So Three key moments. Number one, maybe the, the Centennial show with Real Friends. Where we the played first, Oak Street? The first centen well, I guess second Centennial show with Real Friends. We're at, you know, we had a really good response, and at that point, it, I feel like we were like, you know, is this even worth keeping going? It's been fun, but like, do we want to keep going? And we played that show and it was like, whoa, like, okay, we'd be stupid not to keep oh, going. Oh, that's, yeah, that, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's what you're talking about. That's what I was talking about. Yeah, like the, yeah, first, yeah. the first time where like, people we didn't know were singing yeah. along. Yeah, yeah. That, so that's that probably one. number one. Yeah, number one, one for yeah. sure. Probably putting out Wait That You Buried. And yeah. Like, yeah. definitely. Three, Six maybe going on our first tour. Cause that, you know, it, it was, it was fun. It was, uh, successful as it as it can be at, at that point in your band. I would also say uh, the Metro show we played last June with Citizen. That was really cool because it was sold out and we grew up going to shows there. The greatest risk from my perspective is getting everyone to like kind of join. Just, you know, just like getting it all together and I don't know, like John said, like quitting jobs and just kind of like giving it all up yeah. to do this. Quitting a decent paying job with benefits is for sure. Like to go on tour is Oh my God, I was sure. so scared. Uh, I was like, don't hate me. A, a risk, <laughs> um, definitely, yeah. It paid off though. I think it paid off. Yeah. Way better uh, than we intended. A lot, a lot yeah. better. Way yeah, better. Mm -hmm. Much better. I think just like building something with your friends that feels genuine and not really expecting anything to be given back to you, I suppose. Because I think the all of us have not actually expected anything to come out of any of this. So, very grateful to just be with my friends most of the year and do something productive and fun and artistic. I'm gonna cry, man, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> yeah, that's very, like very, very well, very and well And we're set. breaking up. <laughs> hate to, hate to well I'm out tomorrow. <laughs> we're never playing it. There's just like so much out there, like, just like so many lessons to be learned just like in life in general, you know, doing what we do, you know, you get to, see a lot of places, meet a lot of people, see how different cultures work and like, you know, pull things from different walks of life that you come across. And just, yeah, like, you know, they're like, yeah, like life is just crazy and beautiful. And there's just like, so, it's so vast and just like dip your toes in, like, yeah. get it, get out there, you know? Like, and if I could piggyback on that, like it's also too short to, be doing anything but what you want to be doing, and it's easier said than done for a lot of people. But if you could, if you love to do something and you can find a way to do it, um, you know, uh, I think it's important to to do that. And if you got a shot at uh, pursuing something you want to do, like it's, you know, why would you not take that shot? You know, you can always um, sort of um, get back up on your feet and find something else to do. But I feel like anyone. Um, will live a more fulfilling life if they're doing something that they want to be doing. It doesn't have to be music. It doesn't have to yeah. be. It doesn't have to be anything glamorous or anything like artistic. Like, if you enjoy folding shirts, you know, like, don't get a job as you know a janitor. Like, if you enjoy um, fixing things, don't get an office job. You know, like, just pursue something that you really like to do. And uh, to piggyback off that, yeah, just don't don't wait to do those things. Cause I mean, you know, you could stare at the clock and watch, you know, watch it go around and around. I don't know, time, dude, time moves so fast. So yeah, do, you know, do what you want to do and get out there and 
I don't know, talk to people, make experiences, you know. I think I feel like a lot of things are more than what they seem on the surface and I feel like people are, are too quick to judge and be like, yeah, I'm not about that or I'm not about this, but like, what are you about, you know? We just put out a single called Tune You Out. It's off the new record. There is more to come and we hope that when people hear it, they blast it driving around with their windows down in the springtime and are feeling good about life. And that's really all there is to it.